What's up, you guys? So we are here at Restore Hyper Wellness in Exxon, Pennsylvania, and I have a fun video for you guys today. We're gonna do, since we're here doing our like recovery post-training session, we're gonna do a recovery Q&A. So I'm going to answer some questions that we get a lot around recovery, and that's what this video is gonna be about today. So enjoy. Ooh. My brain goes right to a story and experience. So some signs of overtraining are basically when like your muscles are so like contracted, like it's really hard to, let's say you did biceps, right? It's really hard to like straighten out your bicep. And it's almost like your bicep just stays flexed. It's a really good sign that you probably pushed a little too hard in your arm workout. Legs, same thing. Um, I've experienced this, I've had rhabdo three or four times is basically where um, your body can't filtrate out the lactic acid fast enough. So it kind of just sits. Um, your kidneys have a really bad time filtrating it out. So whenever I experienced that, my um, quadricep muscles literally just were in a flexed state the entire, like the entire time I had experienced. It was really hard to walk. It was very hard to walk. If you touched my legs, I would freak out. Um, so those are some signs that you overtrain. So other signs that you overtrain is that you're just like extremely exhausted, like almost like a foggy brain, can't find the words, can't find your thoughts the next day. Ooh, my favorite question. Okay, what you should eat after you work out? Should it be anything that's a protein or a carbohydrate source? And you wanna eat it within at least like 30 minutes to an hour after training. There is that window that you wanna um, not be out of. Uh, as soon as you can give your body the replenishment that it needs from you just remember, like I always say, you break down muscle in the gym, you build it in the 24 or 48 hours after your workout by what you choose to eat. So as soon as you can get the foods in that help start the recovery process, the better. Um, so like I said, protein or carb, what I'd love to do is a protein shake or like a protein smoothie. So I'll put almond milk, water, unsweetened almond milk, water, protein powder and fruit and I'll blend it up in my ninja bullet that I got for Christmas. Thanks Luke, fire gift. Um, and that's what I'll have immediately following my workout. Or, you know, some other options are protein shake. I'm always gonna go with a protein shake because the way I think about it is, is like you can put a blender bottle in your, say you're going from work, right? You can put the blender bottle in your bag and the protein powder and just add water. And then you could have like a banana with you or some rice cakes or white rice or anything fruit wise, um, they will be able to just scarf right down afterwards. Or if you're an early morning workout person, and a protein shake is a really easy thing to get to, or egg whites is like the equivalent to that. All in all, protein, carb, and you want those that protein and carb too, as well to be a fast digesting uh, food source. So like a whey isolate, as opposed to a whey casing. Whey isolate is going to make you, or gonna help you to digest faster as opposed to a casing, which is um, something that is like used as a meal replacement. It takes longer to digest. And then the carbohydrates like that are uh, simple carbs get digested faster and will help to replenish your glycogen stores faster since you just depleted them as you've worked out. Why would you wanna do that? Like, why would you want to basically destroy all of the progress that you started to make while working out. Yeah, well, well I say like, can you enjoy a drink every now and then? Absolutely. But like, I wouldn't go and work out and then be like, okay, I'm gonna go to happy hour with my friends every single day or like four days of a week. It's, you're not gonna see the progress that you want while living that type of lifestyle. Um, so I wouldn't encourage that. What would you use for muscle soreness? Ice or heat? And the answer is, you never want to use heat. Uh, or I'm sorry, you never want to use it so foggy and cold in here. <laughs> it's negative 160 degrees, you guys. But think of it like this, if you have a broken bone, if you have a broken anything, you always want to use ice to help with swelling. If you have muscle soreness, your best friend is going to be heat, okay? Uh, but when you're in the cold like I am in right now, it helps with inflammation. 
my muscles sore on this is more so heat. So if any of you right now how so the inflammation that I may have accrued from like a leg day or anything that I've just worked out. So again, ice, you sort of broken anything. Soreness and your muscle soreness is on um, heat. I think I just said that, right? Right, ice, broken, heat, yeah. I don't know, I'm fucking cold right now, but I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so, where's that? Whoa! Oh, so Whoa! But it feels great. Okay, so, Another tip, if you are in cold, say you go in like a cool pool or you go into like what I'm in right now, a chamber that is freaking negative 160 degrees. When, if you're shivering, you're not in control. So you wanna try and get control of your breathing. Three, two, one, two. <laughs> Oh my god, I forgot how cold that was. <laughs> so if I prefer cold therapy or hot therapy, it depends on the given day. I do love experiencing discomfort and being uncomfortable. And I would challenge anybody and everybody to have that experience because there's so much that you can learn about yourself while enduring that type of thing that is uncomfortable for you, whether it be strength training or getting into cold therapy or being underneath a heavy barbell and pushing through. Um, so I love that aspect of what cold therapy does because it's it's like you versus you in the moment, right? It's like, cool, I could go into the chamber and you could puss out after X amount of time and not go for the full time that is recommended to be in there. Or you can suck it up and go for the entire time that you're in there and be uncomfortable and they come out and realize that like that was a short period of time just like being underneath the weights pain is only temporary the discomfort is only temporary uh, but the results that you gain from it are tremendous there's some days where i would love to just stay here or go into the sauna spend 45 minutes in the sauna it's comfort you know you feel great although at some points in the sauna i do have to say you're in there for 45 minutes and so there actually is a level of discomfort that you do hit at like minute 35 for the last 10 minutes. When I was in there like two or three weeks ago, I was like, fuck, get me out of here. But then it's a mental game at that point because you could push out or you could stay and, you know, uh, muster up the courage to finish it out. So I muster up the courage. So there is a point, there's discomfort in both. Like this is only 10 minutes. So it's just like, oh, it feels great. Um, but sauna is 45 minutes. So, you know, it depends. It depends on the day. I love discomfort. So there's those days that I love that. And there's days where I just want to feel warm. So it just depends on the day. All right. Last question to you guys. Would I recommend Restore Hyper Wellness? And that is a big fat hill freaking yeah. This place is bomb. Highly recommend it. If you're from the Exxon area, come and check it out. Or if you're one local to you, go and check it out. It's well worth the visit. If you are from the Exxon area, you can get a 20% discount using the code Nikki 20. So on your first services, so I mean like it's a no brainer to at least come and check it out.